Hi guys, um, this is a little tutorial for how to do time lapses in Apple Motion. Um, I have a lot of people asking me about this and I see a lot of uh, people saying that QuickTime 7 is the way. Um, I feel it is not. Uh, it's too old, the program is um, end of life and Motion just works much better anyway. So let's have a look at doing time lapse in Motion. So on my right here, um, I have uh, a bunch of Final Cut Pro 10 projects. Uh, and this one in particular, I did a lot of time-lapse work for. Um, I tend to keep everything organized at uh, finder level, which makes things easier for me. Um, so in here, you can see I have over 600 raw images of a time-lapse shot with a Canon 5D Mark II. So they're pretty big. Okay, so we're just going to open motion here and I'm going to set it to broadcast HD, 25 frames per second because we're in PAL country. And there she is. So if you look on this same directory, you can see Artback Chromatic and in the animations, uh, time lapse stills and the homestead. And you see there's just one file there. That's because this little checkbox allows image sequences to show as one file, which means we can simply just drag it in to the timeline like that. And there's your time, there's your uh, time lapse. Now, of course, uh, this being an HD image, if we zoom back on this, you'll see that that image is massively bigger than the screen. So we're going to hold down the option and the shift key together and scale it back to fill the frame. Go full screen and I won't be able to play this because I'm on an old iMac and I've got screen recording software running at the same time so it's slowing things down but um, there you can see the time lapse. So we're just going to share this file now. So export movie, uh, pick your favorite codec. Uh, for me I would probably pick something like um, ProRes HQ just to keep the quality as high as possible. Uh, select your destination and you name it and I'm just going to work on the desktop for this exercise call it test save it okay so now that that's done I'm just going to uh, show you something else um, I'm going to get another time lapse that I did for this uh, job and uh, this time I, I just shot them in JPEG because I know it's, um, it was just a time lapse and I uh, didn't really need them to be raw. And things work a lot faster, as you've probably all found out, if you are using JPEG. So here we go. It's a little sunset. And uh, I can just scroll through these JPEGs. Uh, go back into motion. Navigate to that same area. Animations and time lapse stills. Oh, yeah, there we are. And the sunset. And there you see um, it's showing up as a single item. I did button off a couple of times and waited for the sunset, so there's two files there, but I'm just going to go for the big one. Drag into the timeline, and uh, I'm going to close up the play range because it only ended up being eight seconds. I need to zoom out on that image so we can see how large that image actually is compared to an HD frame. Hold down the option and the shift key, and bring it back. And I'm just going to reposition it just to make the ground a little bit more prominent and we'll just center it up a little bit there we go, yeah, that's it now, uh, because it's JPEGs, you can see I can just simply hit play and I can look at my time lapse playing there in the timeline of motion um, now, but what I might want to do is just add a little bit of movement just to add a little bit of energy so I'm just going to click on the group here and Go to my behaviors. There we are. Yep. And let's see, basic motion, grow shrink. Yep. So I'm going to just do a little push in on this time lapse. So put that over there, turn on recording of keyframes. Well, that's already made the first keyframe. So now I just go through the end, back to one frame. And let's just hold the option and shift key down again. Make it a bit bigger. Turn off recording. And we're done. So now you can see that this time lapse has a push in on it. Let's have a look at the full frame. Okay, shift Z. And there you can just see it just adds a little bit of extra 
energy into that shot. Okay, so we share that. Export the movie. ProRes HQ. Video only. And I'm just going to select the play range because I don't need the black at the end. Oh, and if you don't want the file to spring open with another application, just select that to none. Okay, so out she goes. Stick it on the desktop for this point in the exercise, but normally you would stick it somewhere a lot safer. And out she goes. So here are the two files. You can see the first one that I did, uh, which was the raw files running for 10 seconds, ended up about 250 megabytes. And the second one, which was about eight seconds, ended up as 188 megabytes. Not small files, certainly you wouldn't want to try and store them on floppies, um, but no problem for most, you know, most applications. You should have enough storage on your drives for something like that, I would think. Okay, so we're going to import these files now. And just select them, go to the desktop, Apple D, there they are, in they come. Cover them to the library or leave them in place, whatever you'd normally do. And here they are inside Final Cut Pro. So there you go, there's the JPEG one with a little zoom on it, and here is the raw files. There's a 10 second time lapse. Now the thing I really like about this is that if I'm not happy, I can always jump back into that motion project and modify it or create a different version, um, make it bigger, make it smaller, do whatever I like. Very, very simple. Um, and it doesn't bog down Final Cut Pro because Final Cut Pro just sees it as a quick time movie. It only takes five to 10 minutes to make the changes and you've got a brand new file that will happily play in Final Cut Pro. So hope you enjoyed that. Hope it helps you with your time lapses in motion.